scripture reading today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. It's called the Beatitudes, from what uh, is also called the Sermon on the Mount. This is when Jesus was on the mountaintop teaching on the disciples and the crowds. So let's listen for God's word. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. And then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted prophets who were before you. Sisters and brothers, this is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, I've learned quickly enough to ask for forgiveness rather than permission when it comes to certain things in life, like animal services. <laughs> My wife, uh, who's actually away at work this week, is a master gardener. So she has a sense of ownership over the yard at home. But I have this thing about what I consider overgrown lawns. Maybe some of you all do also. So every time my wife goes out of town for work, like this week, she comes home to a crushy prune a tree or bush, which I quickly ask for forgiveness after pruning shears, then electric clippers, and then saws I seem to lead from one to the other to the other. So after thinking about this blessing of the animals Sunday and reading our scripture text for this morning, my mind quickly went to creating an animal lover's beatitudes, which may be a bit heretical to some, but hopefully humorous and lighthearted to most. So here it is. Again, please forgive me. <laughs> Blessed are the poor in the wallet. After paying for the vet and food bills, your animal appreciates your efforts. Blessed are those who mourn after losing a beloved pet, for the loss will never be forgotten, but they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek animals, those who are good boys and good girls, who don't bark at every other dog or passerby, for they are always welcomed. Blessed are those animals who hunger and thirst for treats and mealtime, for they will be filled with sometimes better food than most humans eat. <laughs> Blessed are the merciful who care for our animals in shelters and rescues, for they will be the ones who will be rescued. Blessed are the pure in heart, animals and humans alike, for they will see God in all of creation. Blessed are the peacemakers who step in to settle those rough and tumble moments at a dog park, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for animals' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on the account of your beloved pet. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way that persecute the animal lovers who were before you. Again, please forgive me. <laughs> so today we are in week two of our series on the seven marks of vital congregations, and you can read about those in your bulletin if you'd like. This week we're introducing the mark of intentional, authentic evangelism. Now I realize that when we talk about this in Great Lakes at some times, but here is the honest truth. The term evangelism carries with it all sorts of baggage for people. So we just say the word and immediately our minds go to people screaming from megaphones. Tell the evangelists 
and strangers knocking at our doors in unopportune times like when we're in our PJs still. But do you know that today's worship service is a form of evangelism? Right, now don't get scared, I'm not going to entrap you all and talk about some pyramid scheme or rant about eternal damnation. So here's the difference between what I call manipulative evangelism and our second mark of what's called intentional, authentic evangelism. It would be manipulative and gimmicky for us to have such a day as blessing on the animal service in order to A, condemn to hell those who are not Christian and their pets, B, try and convert as many people as possible who we don't even know, or C, create such a service as a source of entertainment or a way to drive up attendance numbers. But on the contrary, intentional, authentic evangelism looks like this. We build relationships with people who don't look like us, sound like us, or think like us for the sake of building community. We genuinely show an interest in our neighbors' lives and seek to improve these lives as they improve our own. And within these healthy relationships, we share the gospel message through our daily living. Remember our first mark, which is like on the discipleship formation. And yes, through our words, we speak. And that's why the words of Jesus on what's called the Beatitudes or the Blessings are so important. Yes, Jesus lived an extraordinary life. He healed those in need. He welcomed the outcasts. He performed miracles. And Jesus taught a lot about faith, about God, and about what he called the kingdom. Some people go as far as to point out to these brief teachings, the Beatitudes, as the lifelong work and ministry of Jesus summed up in a few lines, a few revolutionary, life-transforming lines, if you allow them to be. In these lessons, we can see ourselves, we can see others, and we can see God's unconditional love. Blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people who revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. Friends, the good news is that we have this life-giving message to share with the world and with each other through the lives we lead and the words we speak. And we also have this life-giving message to embrace in our own lives today. And on this day especially, for me, every time I look into the eyes of an animal, all the pain, all the stress, and sadness, and anger, it's all put into a healthy new perspective on life. Each time I'm able to take my dog George out for a walk, wherever George is, uh, <laughs> One great dog. He's back there. <laughs> Every time I will take George out for a walk or sit with my cat Annie on my lap, I'm reminded of a world that stretches beyond all the daily stressors and grind of our daily living, this rat race we call life. Christians call this the kingdom of God. And our animals remind us of this kingdom. In a way, perhaps our animals are a unique blessing from God also, sent as a reminder for us each day. I can imagine God saying something like this, Hey, just in case you didn't read it or hear it today from anyone else, I sent this animal along to remind you how much you are loved as my child. 
these animals are a blessing to us and to all those who they encounter. So remember this, especially when they are undoubtedly will get on our nerves, when they will try your patience or leave a gift for you on the carpet. <laughs> Today we're reminded of God's call for us to share the good news of the saving love of Jesus in an intentional, authentic relationship with our friends, our family members, and our neighbors. And we are reminded of the blessings we can point to in our lives and in the lives of others each day with our beloved pets and animals as an expression of such a daily blessing. And may all God's children say, Amen.